Hello, and welcome to this special talk show edition of the Newsfeed. My name is CJ Fial, and I will be serving as your host today. Over the next 30 minutes, we will be joined by several guests who will help us delve into an issue that has gained serious notoriety across college campuses nationwide. Diversity. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, there's probably a good chance you have heard this word before. What does it mean? Why is it important? The United States preaches diversity through the freedom of expression, but is this really reflected in our society today? According to the 2013 U.S. Census Bureau, 77.7% .7 of the American population identifies as white alone, while 13.2% identifies as black or African American, and 17.1% alone identifies as Hispanic. How is this nationwide diversity reflected in our college campuses? Well, here at Virginia Tech, only 8% of the student population is Asian, 4.9% is Hispanic, and a mere 4% are black. The issue of diversity plays an active role in the everyday lives of students and members of the Virginia Tech community. Today we will be discussing and asking representatives from different student organizations their personal opinions on whether or not diversity is a problem at Virginia Tech. With that being said, let's introduce our guests for today. Guests, can you tell us your name and maybe a little bit about yourselves? We'll start right here on my right. Okay. Hello, CJ. My name is Juan De La Rosa. I'm a freshman political science and Spanish major, and I'm the president and founder of Tech Dreamers. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Leila Mustafa. I'm a junior uh, public relations and philosophy major. I am the vice president of the NAACP chapter here at Virginia Tech. Hey, my name is Obeid Rahman. I'm the president of the Muslim Student Association here at Virginia Tech. I'm a junior, and I'm studying biological sciences and religion. All right, guests, well, thank you guys for joining us here today. Um, obviously, we said that we wanted to talk about diversity. And before we talk about diversity here at home at Virginia Tech, we wanted to talk about it from a national standpoint. Um, and we'll start right here on my right, Juan, and we'll kind of work our way through. Juan, do you think that diversity is an important part of the American culture? You know, like you said, we really, in this country, pride ourselves on diversity. But in terms of are we actually there, I don't think we're there where we want to be in terms of making this country more inclusive and more representative of all the people that live within it? I definitely think diversity is an important part of our American cu culture, basically because America is a country made up of immigrants from different places, so that's a very important aspect. But are we there? Um, yes and no. I feel like there is a lot of diversity, but we definitely don't live in a post-racial society. Yeah, like uh, I would definitely say that we have a good amount of diversity but there's a huge potential for us to tap into that diversity, which we're not doing. We're not tapping into that diversity. We're not learning as much from each other as we could. We're not really taking advantage of all that everyone has to offer. <clears throat> but instead, we tend to just, you know, uh, fall into our own like little like um, like niches of certain society and not interact with each other as much. So there's a huge untapped potential of diversity in our country, and we need to take advantage of it. Layla, you mentioned something that was interesting. You said immigration, and there's so many new laws and policies that we hear about coming out. Do you think that these laws and policies, now we don't have to get specific with it, what exactly they are, do you think that that is hampering and holding down this country from becoming more diverse? Um, that's a tough question to answer, but um, personally, I'm supportive of spe some specific immigration laws that are out there mainly because I am a child of immigrant parents and my parents did come here the the legal way the right way to do it which is why I'm slightly against illegal immigration do I think that we should um, send kids who you know are born in America but are a product of illegal immigration back to a country that they're not familiar with absolutely not and I feel like that somewhat needs to be reformed but I do think that there are rules and procedures that should be followed in terms of getting to this country. Guys, news media portrays so much of this diversity in the country. Do you think that that media, and Obeid, we'll kind of go to you on this one. Do you think that the media is accurately portraying how diverse this country is? You heard the stats earlier. Not at all. Um, I think the media actually, if anything, plays a huge role in um, – increasing racial tensions between different groups. The media really has a huge responsibility in that they can change the direction of our country, the, our, our national conscience, and that, that, you know, really understanding each other. But 
And instead, a lot of times, you know, just to sell, fear is uh, spread. And like, obviously, you, we all know how media works. So um, again, like our media has a huge responsibility. And I think that, you know, if, if we do go about it the right way, we can use it as a huge tool to um, spread awareness about each other. Obeid, you also kind of mentioned earlier in, in our first question that you think that people fall into their specific niche. Um, how, and you're talking about learning from more from each other. How, how does this country do that and mo move towards that type of society, do you think? It really has to be through initiative. Um, I would say that initiative has to be started at the grassroots level. Uh, if you, it's natural for people to fall into niches, so there's nothing wrong with that. But what's, what would be wrong is if you fall into some niche and just because you don't want to move out from your comfortable space, you don't want to try to learn about others, but rather you'd just subscribe to a particular view you have just because that makes you feel comfortable of other groups, then that's wrong. And um, I really think that um, uh, we all need to take personal initiative as Americans to truly understand what diversity is, rather than just falling, falling and um, subscribing to certain narratives that are already out there. We need to think critically for ourselves. Juan, what do you think, and this is a question we'll open up to everybody. Let's start with you, Juan. What do you think the future holds for diversity in the United States as a whole? Um, well, I think Abe makes a great point in that we do tend to stay on our own little niches and everything. So I think identifying intersectionality as a society is really important in that my issue is not just my issue, but it's also your issue because of this. And um, I kind of do want to comment on something that Layla said earlier in terms of illegal immigration. You know, as an undocumented immigrant myself and the child of people who chose to, you know, maybe they didn't do it quote unquote the right way. But within this immigration system that we have now, it's very difficult for people to do it the right way. So I just want to, you know, speak my mind on that yeah. because it's a very, it's an issue that's close to me and personal to me. All right, well, we're gonna step aside and when we come back, we're gonna talk more about diversity specifically here at Virginia Tech. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to this special edition of the Newsfeed. I'm your host, CJ Fiala. So far, we discussed the topic of diversity at the national level, but now we are going to switch gears here and discuss diversity on our campus here at Virginia Tech. Once again, I would like to thank our guest, uh, Obeid Rethman, uh, Layla Mustafa, and Juan De La Rosa for joining us, guys. Thanks for coming in here to sit down with us and talk about this. Um, and let's get into this Virginia Tech kind of topic around our college campus. According to the Institute of Education Sciences, the percentage of minority American college students that have enrolled has greatly increased over the past few years. But when we talked about Virginia Tech numbers earlier, um, the numbers are so far behind here at Virginia Tech. It adds up to less than 15% when we talked about those three races. Why do you think Virginia Tech is so far behind? Why want you all to answer this question? Juan, let's start with you. Um, well, I know when we talk about Hispanics and everything, Location is really a big issue for a lot of Hispanics when it comes to Virginia Tech because it's very distant from the communities that they grow up in, whether it be outside of Richmond, Northern Virginia, or the Chesapeake area. So I'd say location is definitely a barrier that, that um, hurts diversity here. Layla? I absolutely agree with what Juan was saying. And just to piggyback off of that, um, I think there's something almost intimidating about South uh, Western Virginia. It doesn't seem like the most inclusive environment, if that makes sense. Um, and I was a little skeptical before I made the decision to come to the school, but I have a lot of family legacy, which is why I ultimately decided to come here. Again, like, like, like the previous uh, guest mentioned, um, location is definitely an issue, <clears throat> but also, um, I think um, that like the barriers that do exist, whether they be location, whether they be the fields that are you know are focused on more STEM fields, whatever it may be, that um, we need that uh, 
Virginia Tech that 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 gives Virginia Tech that should give Virginia Tech more initiative to take diversity important like give it a really important role. Juan and Layla, you both kind of mentioned location. I want. Do you mind for just kind of as a point of clarification, being more specific? Uh, just to play devil's advocate here, many people could argue location could be difficult for anybody. What did you mean by it being difficult from a diversity standpoint? So in terms of location, I was talking about really um, people find it difficult to find the communities that they've grown up with within here in southwestern Virginia. So if people don't have those communities, people don't really feel as comfortable to come three hours away or four hours away and be so far away from everything they know. Layla. Yeah, Blacksburg is definitely, um, I think we can all agree, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so um, to come from, I'm from Northern Virginia, so it's, you know, very dense population, very diverse. And to come to a place where, you know, I'm, I could be walking down the street and I don't see nearly as many people. And at that, I don't see nearly as many people of color. It's a little intimidating and it makes you kind of question why you would want to be here, if that makes sense. Guys, Virginia Tech is, from a demographic standpoint, t still technically in the southeastern part of the United States. And from what we talked about earlier, media does portray things in a specific light. And sometimes the southeastern part of the United States is still associ associated with racist beliefs. Do you guys think that racism has anything to do with the low numbers, uh, low diversity numbers here at Virginia Tech, Obey? So... Racism is definitely a problem that exists throughout our country, no matter where it may be, whether it's in Northern Virginia, whether it's in Southwest Virginia. Uh, but th though it might be for some people, for me personally, it really wasn't. You know, a lot. There, you know, when we're talking about stereotypes, there's stereotypes for all groups of people, whether it be people of color or not. Um, like you know, per personally, like uh, I, I mean, I have friends from all different uh, groups, whether they be you know, more from the rural countryside, whether it be more from suburban or urban areas. And most people, what I've come to learn is they have good hearts, they're good people, but you, they might grow up in an area where they're not exposed to people of different backgrounds, due to which they sometimes have more stereotypical views of people, which, you know, might lean towards more racist views sometimes. But at the same time, like, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, I, I kind of want to hop to uh, like the previous question about uh, talking about the location of Blacksburg. You know, we're kinda, we are like out here like in the middle of nowhere. Well, I wouldn't say in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but like it's a more um, secluded, isolated, percent. secluded yeah. area. But really, that's something that makes Blacksburg unique because we are in our own almost like a bubble here. You know, within the Virginia Tech Blacksburg community, and uh, you know, for all of us watching here, for all of us here right now that really gives us like um, a special um, uh, role in order to, we can, like, we can really make a greater impact in the small bubble than we could in an area that was more populated than Nova, right? So like, I, th I think rather than being a negative, we can really turn it to make it into a positive. Layla? Um, going back to the question of um, you know, the whole racism thing, Fortunately, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like truly racist in Blacksburg, which is something that a lot of people, I guess, wouldn't really be able to say. Um, but there are a lot of like microaggressions, and by that I mean unintentional racism. It's something that like people wouldn't necessarily think is them being racist. They just kind of like make comments that they don't necessarily realize. But um, in terms of that, I feel like you find that anywhere, and it's not necessarily just you know, isolated to Blacksburg, Virginia. Um, if anything, like it's, it brings me a lot of joy and pride to see how, I guess how willing our community is to be more inclusive. Um, we have a lot of diversity and inclusion initiatives that our administration is working on. Even multicultural programming and services is trying to make this a more inclusive environment. And that is, that says a lot of, positive than it does negative, that our administration is willing to work with us if we feel uncomfortable at this school. And so that is definitely something that I, you know, take pride in as a Hokie. Juan, do you think that racism, is, racism has played a role in diversity numbers at Virginia Tech? I think in the history of Virginia Tech, it really has. And that's probably, you know, one of the reasons we have the principles of community. But now, like today, I really do think that the administration, like I said, is taking the initiative to make this a more inclusive and diverse community in which people feel welcome, 
but I mean, at the same time, it is these microaggressions, and like one microaggression can ruin an entire experience for one person. Obeid, you mentioned something that I thought was interesting. You said we are, in a way, in our own bubble here, in the town of Blacksburg, in a way, revolves around this campus, and this campus determines so much of the community that the people live in. Do you think that the, the university sponsors a, a positive environment that diversity can grow in? I believe it does, but there's like always room for improvement. Uh, you know, one example that I can give, um, you know, I, I'm involved with the Muslim Student Association. Uh, m Muslims have a restriction on what they can eat, like like the meat has to be halal, which is almost like kosher is for, uh, for people who follow the Jewish faith. Um, and when I was a freshman, I came on to uh, Virginia Tech's campus, there weren't any halal options. So, you know, I, I, could, I really couldn't eat much meat, you know, I was just eating pizza pretty much every day. <laughs> but like, uh, over the past couple of years, uh, now a lot of the chicken on campus is halal and uh, even like the Virginia Tech farms and um, Virginia Tech meat center and dining halls like have all collaborated and worked together so now we even have like local halal lamb you know in, in dining halls so uh, you know there's so people like like um, uh, was meant it was mentioned uh, the ca like people who are really involved in the administration of this campus are willing to work together to help you know make this a more inclusive environment but there's always more potential to grow. And I would say the potential to grow is more in the student arena than maybe in like the um, administration arena. But the administration has a huge uh, role and plays a huge role in allowing that student arena to develop uh, like in a very uh, positive manner. Guys, do you think that you all are part of very different or, or they, similar organizations in a way, but very different uh, in their own aspects. Do you think your organizations have made strides to help Virginia Tech a more diverse university? Um, well, I think there's a huge difference between being diverse and being inclusive. Um, speaking on my organization, I can't really say anything about anybody else's, but we tend to kind of cater to the black community at Virginia Tech, which is something that I am looking forward to change a little bit because it is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And colored people kind of embodies a whole different type of demographic. It's not just, you know, um, you know, secluded to just the black community. And I feel like we, are taking the necessary steps to become more inclusive, but I realize that we don't really reach out to other organizations unless we're, you know, we're going through something traumatic or tragic. For example, during the um, UNC murders of three Muslim students, that's the only time that we ever kind of reached out and worked with the MSA, and I feel like that should have that should have been something that we would we should have done like a while ago, and not because something bad happened but just to, I guess, uplift each other and work together to make the campus more diverse. Because if we're inclusive, we can hopefully become more diverse. So like, um, uh, you know, like I've mentioned already like a couple times, like, you know, there's a lot of room, a lot of potential to grow. Uh, but uh, what uh, the MSA has done over the past couple of years, like hosting like interfaith events with different groups, um, uh, for example, uh, a couple years ago, there was um, uh, a, like a, a like a panel of Muslims at uh, the Wesley Foundation, which is a Christian organization. And then there was like a dinner together, and people got to talk to each other, learn from each other. Uh, also, the MSA has uh, Islam Awareness Week to kind of spread awareness about who Muslims are, what Islam is, not propagating a faith, but really just to spread awareness and misconceptions that are spread uh, that are really common in our in our um, in our nation nowadays. Um, but also, like. Um, uh, you know, just kind of uh, being open to other people coming in and to like discussing stuff and uh, you know helping other like uh, cultural groups from whatever background they may be and anything they could um, the, anything they need help whether it's like organizing whether it's um, uh, sponsorships or anything like that. But there's always potential to grow, and I think you know I look forward to in this ne next year to grow more with all the organizations. All right, unfortunately, we got to jump to a quick break, but when we come back. Uh, we'll take a look at a clip from a Virginia Tech assistant professor of political science and the faculty advisor uh, to Tech Dreamers, uh, Mr. or Dr. Excuse me, Javier Medina Vidal. That and more coming up after the break. Really? Buzz.
Lawrence, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a. I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to this special talk show edition of the Newsfeed. I'm CJ Fiala, CJ Fiala alongside our special guest panel here today talking about diversity on college campuses. Inclusive VT was introduced by former President Charles Steger back in 2000 to define the needs and directions for the next stage in Virginia Tech's growth as an inclusive and diverse institution. Dr. Medina Vidal specializes in race and ethnic politics, specifically U.S. Latino politics. We caught up with him earlier this week, and he shared some interesting thoughts on the program. Take a listen. The model that they've chosen to go, go with in terms of d diversity and inclusion on campus is um, one that's decentralized. So although there'll be somebody sort of leading the, leading the effort, they've decided to sort of decentralize the model so that in different parts of campus, in different levels, administrative levels, you have faculty, we have mostly staff, staff members, um, dealing with uh, questions of inclusion and diversity. So I'm not a fan of that model. I don't, I don't, so I'm not optimistic about that model. Okay, guys. Um, first off, if you are familiar with VT Inclusive, if not, you guys are familiar with how the administration um, helps to introduce diversity on campus. Do you think the administration puts enough emphasis on diversity at Virginia Tech? Well, for me, um, since I'm a freshman, I haven't really been exposed to what came before that, but one of my first experiences on campus was an inclusive VT forum in which I heard President Sands really, really want to take initiative in making this a more inclusive and diverse campus. And from what I've seen this year, I really think they are working towards that. Yep. I would agree. I think they're definitely working towards making this a more diverse and inclusive environment. Um, I don't think that we're quite there yet, and I can't really say when I think that we will be there, if we ever will be, but um, it, I think they're definitely trying. So. Over, over the past couple of years, I've heard uh, several, several initiatives that you know, were gonna happen or were to happen, uh, but I never really saw them actualize uh, practically. Um, so I would say that there needs to be a great emphasis on practical application of all the stuff that we talk about, because we can talk about it all day, you know, we can have events and talk about how important inclus inclusive is, uh, <laughs> how important inclusiveness is, and how important diversity is. But at the end of the day, that's just that's all just like lip service unless we actually have practical application of it. So, um, you know, with the new administration, I really hope that there is. There, I, I don't doubt the sincerity, but I really hope that there is practical application uh, that comes about rather than just talking about how we need to make it more diverse and talking about how important diversity and inclusivity is. So. Guys, I, we heard an interesting stat when we were kind of doing some research for this show. Uh, according to a 2015 rankings, Virginia Tech is ranked 461 out of 933 for diversity numbers on college campuses. So whether or not the administration is putting an emphasis on it, it doesn't seem like much, much is changing. Uh, how, how is that going to change with the new initiatives uh, in a new president with new platforms coming into this university, do you think? Well, for me, um, I think it really just comes out of how do you make it actually more accessible? Like, you can talk about it being more inclusive, but what, like, like we said, what actions are you actually going to take to make it more inclusive and actually, like, retain students? I know, like, within, like, the black student population, like, retention is a big thing. Like, you can get people to come, but it's like, how do you keep them here? And how do you make them feel that they're actually welcome here and want to stay? Something interesting that I actually read a while ago is out of the over 24,000 undergraduate students that we have, only 871 of them are black students. And um, how do we fix that? I'm not entirely sure. I don't feel like I can answer that question properly. But um, I think we, de we definitely do need to be targeting communities, um, you know, with a higher black population, a higher Latino population to kind of encourage them to apply to Virginia Tech, encourage them to come here. And once they get here, continue on with those relationships and make them feel like, you know, we want them to be here. Outreach is really important. 
Uh, there are some outreach um, initiatives, such as the Gateway Program, which is a great program, but uh, that can rarely be diversified to a greater extent and can be gr it can grow, has a lot of room to grow. So uh, outreach is the number one thing that I would say. Uh, getting into details, I c couldn't speak to them, but outreach. You guys are all part of organizations that deal with diversity and inclusion. Now, how do you think your organizations can play a role in the recruiting process, let's call it, of getting more um, minorities to enroll at Virginia Tech? Well, from my experience with Tech Dreamers, I think we've already taken steps towards this. Um, for example, last semester we had a tour that we did as an organization that was for a group of 15 Dreamers from Northern Virginia. And right now we're working with admissions to create a Dreamers admissions page because the application process for Dreamers is different from other students, both international and you know, in-state and out-of-state students. So just making them feel like they can go on the admissions page and that you know, people actually are aware that they want to apply, that they have the potential to come here and just like, taking initiatives like that. Um, we actually had a booth at the Gateway Showcase this past weekend. Gateway, if you're not familiar, is a program where minority students who are accepted to Virginia Tech kind of come and stay with a student host for the weekend and we try to like, I guess, convince them to come to Tech. Um, which is, it has its flaws, but it's, it, you know, it's a pretty decent program. I went through it when I was in high school. Um, but we definitely had a presentation about what the NAACP at Virginia Tech Virginia Tech is, what it does, and kind of giving them more information on that. Um, I definitely feel like we could expand that if we were actually able to reach out to high school students. Um, that might be something that we could do within the next year or so. so. Within the MSA, we've been blessed with a great community. Uh, There's a really strong camaraderie between all the members, uh, a very really strong brotherhood and sisterhood. Um, and due to that, a lot of students, uh, when they come down to visit, a lot of Muslim students, when they come down to visit, and they visit the mosque or they visit the MSA and see, see like how strong the bond is between everybody, they're drawn to Virginia Tech just because of the MSA. And there are several members, um, a lot of members, who really cite that as one of the main reasons for them coming to Virginia Tech, as opposed to other colleges um, that they had been accepted to in the area or in the state. Um, so. Virginia, like what, what MSA really tries to, tries to do is form a really strong community within a community so that it gives people a safe place, a people a place to connect, to really um, uh, you know, develop bonds with each other that is much greater than just friendship. And uh, that really serves as a, hu as a huge draw to um, Muslims around the state and beyond. So. All right, guys. What do you think the future holds for Virginia Tech and diversity on this campus, and what will it take to consider Virginia Tech a diverse and inclusive institution? Well, you know, um, I have three more years here, so I guess I'll actually be able to see if any of this like manifests into anything, but I want the administration to continue the efforts that they're, they're already starting, and eventually, you know, when I graduate, I want to be able to see, you know, actual number percentages that are reflective of the population. You know, the mission of Virginia Tech when it was founded was to take people from all walks of life and mold them into citizens that could participate in our democracy. So that's ultimately what I want to see. All right, we're very short on time here. Layla. I just want to see Virginia Tech be more inclusive. You can be diverse, but not inclusive and vice versa. So I, I agree. And there has to be a focus on critical thinking in which the students who come into Virginia Tech are forced to think critically about what it really means to be an American, what it really means, what does diversity really mean, what does inclusive, inclusiveness really mean. And that has to be pushed so that we can really truly understand it and then apply it. All right, I want to again thank my guests and our guests here for joining us and offering you guys opinions on diversity. It's greatly uh, appreciated. Before we wrap up, if there is anything that you want to add, uh, make sure that you send your ideas into the newsfeed um, at N newsfeednrv at gmail.com. That'll wrap up this edition of the newsfeed. I'm your host, CJ Fiala. We'll see you next time.